What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. So many of the professed beliefs by a public intellectual are motivated, this is something to keep in mind, by the desire to bolster their appearance as an intellectual. Mm. So in other words, Neil's superciliousness, his sanctimony, is PR. It's scholarly marketing. I'm the, better than you. The intellectual seeks to ensure that their intelligence is recognized by others. Yeah. It's not enough for them to possess it. The public intellectual in particular. So, by the way, this implies that there's like some, some stratified IQ order where you can rise above. And I'm not saying that. I'm saying Neil implies that with his actions and his attitude and his, his viewpoints. Otherwise, why would he care about climbing the Alps of cognitive Mount Bravado if not to look down at the hypothetical caste system that comprises these obtuse <laughs> untouchables? It's <laughs> a good way to put it, man. It's a good way to put it, but I, I said we put a pin in it and come back to it. We we got to talk about UFOs. I mean, it's been, it's been in the background of some of the things we've talked about today. I say that to you in particular, though, because you have an unbelievable library of conversations about UFOs, sightings that could or could not have happened, things that could or could not be here. Also, like meta ideas on what it is or what's behind it. You've done some, I believe you have Lou Elizondo on there. You've had Ross Coltart. You've had Richard Dolan, who's going to be on this podcast as well and many others to talk about this. You've also discussed it with a lot of the pure physicists that you've brought on the podcast. I mean, to tie it back to something we talked about earlier in the conversation, it is absolutely a part of, you know, the meaning question when people are thinking about this kind of thing. But at, at the at the front end of it, based on all the conversations you've had and all the people you have at, you've had access to to discuss this topic, what is your current stance on aliens are and by that, I mean two layers. Number one, do they exist? Like, is there intelligent life somewhere out in our galaxy or beyond? And B, have they been here before? My honest answer is I don't know. And it's the most humdrum answer. When I speak to people, they want me to buy into some reference frame, like a threat-based reference frame, or that it's a benevolent other being reference frame or it's a breakaway civilization or it's future humans or it's past civilization that has emerged and it's just some drones that are coming about. I don't know. People get upset when they, when you're not believing their viewpoint. Mm. Yep. I don't know, man. I've been jostled around so often in my head to different, with different views from different, almost each person has a different theory and it's, it's quite unnerving. So I gave this, I gave the example of reference frames or coordinate systems in math. There's also something called a, called a, a chart transition function. So that is when you switch reference frames. And I've had too many chart transition functions mm. where my brain is, it's too rattled on this subject. I can't make sense of it. Who do you think is, has had the most compelling takes on it? Not necessarily that you agree or disagree. Kevin Knuth. Why? So Kevin Knuth, I haven't done the calculation. I've seen him do the calculation, but I have to verify it myself. And that's also something else that separates a potential Terrence Howard from someone who is a, someone who does math and physics from the academy is that I wrote on Twitter, I said this thing that said, shut up and calculate, which is a quote from physics. Shut up and calculate is less than speak up and understand. Mm. Now, many people would like that, but the point is that in order to get to the point where you can speak up and understand, well, forget about the speaking up, to understand, you have to calculate. You actually do have to shut up and calculate. You don't have to shut up, but you have to get your hands dirty. So I haven't gotten my hands dirty with what 
Kevin has said. But he did some calculation about if a craft, whatever this craft is, was to emit radiation at this pulse, which it should, because if it was this mass and this size, it should, and it would be in the in the UV, I believe, post UV, then it would shut off cars. And it would shut off cars at a rate of 12.5% because of some some reasoning, somehow the engine, the way the engine works, if you get a pulse that's a, of that frequency, which mm-hmm. shut off 12.5% of the times the cars. And then he's like, and if you look at the library of reports, it turns out when craft leave, there is the reports of sometimes cars are shut down. And what is the rate? You can do the calculation. Oh, it's shit. It's 15%, which is close because there's an error bar. So I'm like, that's super interesting. However, I don't know if that's a retrodiction. It's always easy to come up with a what you think of as a prediction when you know the facts. That's another reason why theories of everything or toes are difficult because we people will say, oh, I've predicted the fine structure constant. Or do you know it's 1 over 30, 137 approximately and then you've made your theory work to that? Uh, like you don't know. If you never knew what the fine structure constant was or you came up with some something else that's called a prediction, that would be interesting. But if you're saying, hey, look, there's this data. I know what the data is. So I'm going to extrapolate that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I don't know. I thought that was interesting. He said that at the Seoul conference, which was a wonderful conference because that was in person. That's something else. There's some people who would say, not slander, but snide comments toward some of the guests on theories of everything. Not always me, but I've, I take it personally. Oh, so sure. I understand I take it pers- that. Yes. And in person, they're just the sweetest little pieces of jello. <laughs> and then they even say, hey, Kurt, like, I'm sorry that I said, I'm like, oh, I, I don't know who this person is by their username. Like, I only know handles. So I can't tell what your handle is by your right. face, but it doesn't matter. They come up and then they they apologize. And it's, and we have a great time and we bond. So that was a wonderful conference. Over there is where Kevin Knuth revealed. I, I don't know if it's actually a reveal, but he showcased that calculation. That's fascinating. That's that's a way different angle to it than I've really heard anyone do. I like that. I mean, to me, it's like comes back to the the trust conversation. It's like suddenly the government's releasing all this info mm-hmm. about UFOs. And they got these different guys coming out, the Lou Elizondo's, the Christopher Mellons, the David Grushes and stuff like that. And so now people are like, wait a minute, what's what's the catch here? Why, why are they doing this? And so now people are pushing, a lot of people are pushing the other way, like, oh, none of this shit's real. But when I just sit back and think about the little speck we are on a universe of the unknown, I, first of all, I think it's to inject some math into it, I think it's mathematically almost impossible that there is not intelligent life out there somewhere. However, that's a different conclusion than have they been here before though and saying yes to that. Mm. Because you don't know that just because there's intelligence life somewhere out there in the universe doesn't mean they've been here before. And you can start playing tricks with your head if, if you start thinking about all these potential sightings and trying to pattern them based on what were similar about them, but also based on when they occurred and where they occurred and you know it gets a little crazy then when suddenly it becomes a calling card for people to it's popular for people to say they saw something right so now with the internet in this current era we have crowdsourced data where fucking everyone's saying they saw a ufo or whatever and it starts to make it less trustworthy as far as like have they been here that said there's so much in this world that isn't explainable that my my only conclusion is that there's some there is some form of either alien interaction you will if you will or straight up divine intervention that has had to occur across the context of the known history of our earth as we understand it for certain things to happen certain things to exist and i'm not getting like even meta with like oh where does an idea come from or whatever i'm not getting that granular i'm getting more towards like damn how do we build the pyramids you know or fuck like how did human beings figure out this or that you know i i was i was i was down in south america and talking to a shaman about ayahuasca and he was explaining that the number of potential the the number of potential combinations yes, yes. that it would have taken to figure out that this exact leaf from this tree and i forget if it was like the bark from this other plant in a perfect 
type of ratio combination could form this this type of substance it was they did math on it It was like virtually impossible that in the context of human history we could have figured that out it was like 0.0000001 so i guess it's possible but like the idea is that there's something divine about that or something otherworldly about that and when i see these types of examples i'm like something's going on out there yeah let's break some of that down so number one about the ayahuasca i spoke to dennis mckenna terence mckenna's brother Hmm. and he said there was an ordinary explanation for that and i forgot the explanation but it was something like they already brew that sort of tea from that plant hundreds of years before Hmm. and they have they were trying to make ayahuasca work but then it just degrades extremely quickly because it doesn't have the moai inhibitor something like that or ma Send me that. I want to see that sure. afterwards. Yeah. And then he said, well, it was reasonable that either a leaf fell down into their concoction or they just combined the two. And I thought, oh, okay, that's super interesting that someone who's a, a large proponent of of the of the careful but positive use of psychedelics Absolutely. would say something that was against the spiritual component to it. Because usually if you are in for, for psychedelics, you're down for anyone who says something positive about psychedelics, even if it's a spiritual side that you don't believe in. Yeah, I'm not, by the way, I use that as an example because that's one that came to my head. I'm not married, I understand. To, that. No, I'm I understand. Not married to that at all. I understand. So I understand. if that's the case, that's great. Okay, now about the technology of the past, I want to talk about, see, when it comes to UFOs, I believe that we're, so much of what is said about UFOs, I don't believe in. I disbelieve. Like people will say they're much more advanced because they have a technology. I don't see why that's the case. And people just say it. So firstly, advanced is an ambiguous term. You're not just advanced. There's not a culture that's more advanced than another culture. So for instance, you could be like, well, let me forget I'm liberal. I don't want to use the word advanced and say one is better than the other. I'm going to use technologically advanced. That's that's more of a superior term. No, even that, you can break down technology. So Imagine, we think all technologies just build on one another, and when you get one, you get the other. It doesn't work like that. So you could conceivably imagine a a culture that has developed the steam locomotive, okay? Mm -hmm. And another has developed medicine, like advanced medicine, whatever that means. Which is more advanced? I don't know. Subjective. Yes. And you could say, well, if you had the steam locomotive, you would have medicine or vice versa. That's not necessarily the case. China had the printing press in 730, and other countries had a monetary system. So what's more advanced, a monetary system or the printing press? Again, subjective. What's more advanced, if you invent a light bulb or someone has aqueducts? Yeah, so the point is that we say, well, aliens are advanced. How do you know? Maybe that's, maybe they're looking at us like, how the F do these earthlings do what they do? And they've developed something with the people who are like, well, it's, it must be advanced physics. And to get to advanced, you, don't, you have no idea. Some people who believe they've cracked anti-gravity do so in their garage. They're just playing around with magnets. So let's imagine it is the case that there's just one fundamental trick or switch that you need to apply in order to crack anti-gravity. Well, then it could just be like the K66 or whatever it was recently of the superconductor that came out. It turned out you could make it in your garage and it's a superconductor. You would think, no, you would need an advanced civilization and the LHC and and varieties of scientists working on it to develop a superconductor. And then, no, some people from Korea or China came up with a superconductor. It turned out to not be the case, but it was close to being the case and like it was a... It was a whole sensation, almost like Terrence Howard at the time. It, it, not, it wasn't close. It conceivably could be that a superconductor is something that you can make in your garage. So maybe it's the case that, these, that anti-gravity is something you can make in your garage. I don't believe that it's necessary aliens are more advanced. And so I don't buy when people like Neil deGrasse Tyson say, if they're so advanced, why did they crash? Oh my gosh, how do you even know? There's so many answers to that. What if... This is a temperamental machine, an extremely, it's, it's a miracle one out of 50,000 of them works. And so, and they're getting 30,000 out of 50 of 50,000 to work. So they're geniuses. Could be that. It could be they don't care about them. Like we don't care about drones and we send them into fire, into, into lava. And so they just break. We don't care about drones. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.